Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Breathe. This week we're going to be covering how to, I guess not really how to, but I'm going to be dissecting an Illumagic Mini uh, pretty much to change it to the freshwater setup. I'm going to be changing out the LED pucks. I don't think there's ever been a better time than to show you guys the inside and I guess if you ever are replacing the pucks on yours or changing yours from freshwater to saltwater, it'll be a great video for you as well. So opening up the box. Uh, you will find obviously the light itself. I did remove the manual earlier. I had opened them that you're going to find a manual included. It gives you a brief description, you know, very briefly how to, <coughs> excuse me, how to operate the light. But all in all, you get the mini you see here. You're very quickly going to notice the build quality on this light. Uh, the big old heat sink on the top, the big old uh, glass diffuser plate on the bottom. Believe it or not, it's actually glass. Uh, power button. It's not actually a button. It's more of like a uh sensor control of temperature and that's how it's operates it's actually really cool i'll show you guys a little bit later so opening up the box completely you're going to be uh, greeted with the power cord followed by the power supply <clears throat> obviously this is what is used to power the light and um, after that you are going to be very satisfied to find a hanging kit so with all the Illumagic lights, they all come right out of the box with hanging kits. That's a great feature and you know, saves you a little bit of money. So once you get everything laid out, you got kind of the four main pieces here, the light, hanging kit, the power cord, and the power supply. So once you got everything out, you are gonna wanna locate the covers for the screws. There's a total of four of them. Uh, so these covers are used to cover the three millimeter screws on the inside, obviously, so no moisture, none of that gets in there. Uh, removing them is very easy. You know, just kind of uh, use your nails to pry them off or just trying to get something under them and you'll see the screws are gonna be exposed there. And again, uh, there is a total of four. Once you do get those out, you are gonna have to remove the, the power button itself. And again, it's not a button. This is where you're really gonna see the mechanism. I'm getting it out. Again, it's just like uh, the uh, screw covers, kind of try and put your nail under it and slightly pull it out. Now you don't wanna instantly pull it out completely. As you're pulling it out, uh, once it does release, you want to kind of do a, uh, a, a loosening motion as if it were a screw, and you're going to notice a spring on the inside. So the reason we don't want to pull it, obviously, we don't want to over pull the spring, thus it's going to cause the button to obviously not work down the road, and that's not something we're looking to do. So one of the tools you are going to need is going to be a three millimeter driver like you see here, obviously a three millimeter um, Allen. Either or, it's the same thing, doesn't really matter which one you use as long as, again, it is three millimeter. There's a total of four screws you are gonna have to loosen, uh, two on this side, two on the opposite end. The ones on the opposite end, guys, you don't need to take them off. I'm only gonna take them off just to show you guys what's on the other side. Um, <clears throat> very simple. The other side, the reason you don't pull it, it does have the power jack on there that's directly soldered to the board. So if you did wanna remove it, you'd obviously have to unsolder that if you did want to completely remove that again it's probably not something you're gonna have to do i'm just doing it for video's sake just so you guys can see what's on the other side um, and again this is a side with the power jack that does not <clears throat> uh, you don't need to take the screws out again you can take them out but just be sure you don't pull it because it is hardwired directly onto the board once you remove the end plastic cover pieces you're going to notice there's a little rubber grommet this grommet is obviously used to um you know keep some moisture out if it does water does splash on it um, it helps keep it out from the inside of the electronics so be careful when removing this again we don't want to pull that spring uh, once you do get that removed you are going to notice the top uh, pretty much uh, light displacement or diffuser or whatever you want to call it uh, the top piece here is made out of glass that was something i was very happy to see from this light the i, I i'm going to call it a glass diffuser uh, but they could have went the cheap route. They could have made them out of plastic. It's very nice. The Illumagic, one extra mile. Uh, added some frost, obviously, did diffuse some of the light. But I love to see that it was made out of glass. <clears throat> so pushing on the opposite end, you can take it out either way, either the right side or left side. Pull it aside, place it somewhere where it's not going to get scratched. I mean, here's where you really get to see uh, the board. So you're going to notice some very key things. Obviously, a lot of these things don't matter to you. But <clears throat> me, I love electronics. It was nice to see. Uh, the RF chip for the Bluetooth, uh, very nice connections. I think these are the XT uh, JST connections. Again, it doesn't matter to you, but just I'm, I love looking at stuff like this. Uh, I can see the MOSFET, the capacitors, 
the battery, you know, whenever this thing does uh, not have power, this is the battery that typically pretty much saves the time. I don't know if it saves the memory as well. But again, there's not stuff you need to know, just someone like me that I enjoy electronics. It's very cool uh, to see the internals. More importantly, to see guys that they did not skimp out um, on any part of the board here whatsoever. So one of the other tools you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver. Number one, number two Phillips should work great. Uh, or just any Phillips you got laying around. Uh, you're gonna need to remove uh, these two screws here. Now these two you're gonna notice a little bit longer than the ones holding down the pucks that we'll see a little bit later. These here are the ones actually holding the silicone optics um, down here on the lights. Now, when I first heard about these silicone optics, I was like, what the hell does this even mean? It's some sort of fancy plastic, right? Well, no guys. As you can see here, these are actually silicone optics. Now, these optics are said to withstand high heat, to not glare, to not, obviously not scratch, it is silicone, um, and to last a lot longer than any other optics out there. You know, there's a lot of plastic optics out there that over time, they can degrade, they can uh, get some frost on them, they can turn yellow. Uh, a lot of stuff can happen, but very cool to see these. Honestly, guys, they're very cool to mess with because, again, they are a silicone uh, type of opt uh, optic. So it was very cool to see this again. I had seen the marketing behind them, but never thought it was actually a piece of silicone. So pretty neat to check out. So the last uh, three screws are going to be the ones I'm taking off here. Now, guys, pay attention. These are shorter. Obviously, they don't need to go as far as the two optic ones. Uh, so you're going to notice the two optic ones are a little bit longer, noticeably longer, and then the three holding down the pucks are shorter. You're obviously going to have to take off three for each puck, so a total of six, and then two per each optic for a total of four. So one of the last things you're going to have to do is obviously lift the pucks. Now this is why I didn't disconnect, the, uh, disconnect them yet. I actually left the pucks connected because I'm allowed to obviously pull them up through there. Now you will notice a thermal paste on both sides. Obviously this is made to dissipate heat. It's used in computers and a lot of electronics just dissipate heat. Taking off the connector is very simple. I take it off from the puck end, just kind of twist it. Doesn't need too much force and set those aside. Now personally guys, I am going to be switching these out to the fresh water pucks. Uh, so obviously you can set these aside, you can save them. Just be sure guys, there is again thermal paste on them. So you don't want to get that everywhere. If you do, just clean your hand, but try your best not to get it everywhere and set them aside. So the fresh water ones do have a different part number. You can see here on the top right. I'll, <clears throat> you know, I'll put them side by side with the salt water ones. You can see it's a different 1905. Um, they also kind of have like the Cree logo on them. And then the fresh water ones here, on the, I think they're 1798. A little bit hard for me to see here on the video. But anyways, <clears throat> grab your two fresh water ones. Um, put those obviously installed. Make sure they both match. I mean, if you do turn, turn on the lights, you'll notice the colors won't be matching. Um, it's going to be very cool to see the recess they designed on the board. So it makes the pucks fit nice and flush when you do set them down. Again, guys, make sure there is thermal paste. These ones I got do have thermal paste. Set those down. Uh, I like to connect them before I put them down. It allows me to maneuver the puck a little bit better. Uh, but just get a line as best you can. Try to line up the holes from the top. You'll be able to see the holes. Make sure the screws are able to go in. Um, <clears throat> and that's very straightforward. Do the same for the opposite side and you should be good to go. Now, the last step is going to be to obviously screw these down. Now guys, keep in mind what I mentioned earlier. There's each puck itself is gonna have uh, three screws, uh, three to hold the puck down and then two to hold the silicone. Um, optics down. So make sure you grab your three shorter ones, put all three in, three per puck, a total of six. Obviously there is two pucks. And then lastly for the optics, you're going to use two per puck, so a total of four. So you don't need to do this. I just like doing that. I got some 70% uh, alcohol with some Q-tips just to clean uh, the LEDs themselves on the top, just in case I got any oil or anything on top of them. You don't need to do this. If you wish to do it, by all means, go ahead. And again, just make sure you use alcohol. Don't use water or any other chemical. Um, and just get your Q-tip, put them through the top of the LEDs. This will just ensure that there's no oil or any nasty gunk or, <clears throat> excuse me, any residue on them. Uh, you want to allow them to dry for maybe 20, 30 seconds. As you guys know, alcohol evaporates very quickly. Um, but, you know, by the time you assemble the whole thing, it's almost guaranteed uh, to be dry. So I really wouldn't even worry much about that. 
So the last part you are going to need is get your optics down. Now the last four screws that are going to be left are the longer ones. Um, and again, these hold these silicone optics down. Uh, now for these guys, one thing you've got to be careful guys, again, they are silicone. So if you tighten them down all the way, what you're going to do is you're eventually going to compress the silicone so much where it'll obviously deform a little bit on the mounting hole. So they don't need to be tight at all guys. Just get them nice and snug. You'll be able to see as soon as it sits down. If you notice it deforming by any means where you are putting the screw in, that just means you're too tight. Uh, so <clears throat> back it up a little bit. Just make sure they're nice and snug. Um, it's not like you're going to be throwing these lights around, you know, I wouldn't be worried about the screw backing out or anything of that sort uh, because the silicone itself is actually adding some back pressure. Uh, so again, don't be worried, but please be sure that you do not over tighten them. So once it's all complete, this is exactly what it looks like, guys. And again, <clears throat> the reason I did this conversion is because I want to use these lights for the refugium. Um, I've heard guys have great success if you do the... Uh, switch to the freshwater lights because they obviously allow more of that red purplish pinkish spectrum um, Which obviously Chato thrives on so this is what I'm gonna be using uh, for my refugium I'm obviously gonna be making a full video on that a little bit later now assembling it guys just do the opposite as you did to put it back together um, Make sure you get your side plates on Make sure you get the rubber piece on keeping in mind the spring guys. You don't want to mess up the spring um, so be very careful with it. Once you get that uh, rubber piece on, then you put your plastic end caps followed by the three millimeter screws. Again, don't need to over tighten any of these screws guys. Just get them nice and snug. Uh, once you do get those, make sure you put your screw covers back on and that is complete. For the power button itself, it's very simple to do. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to get the power button itself. You're going to kind of start and put it over the spring itself and you want to do a tightening uh, motion as you're pushing it down. Uh, what this is going to ensure is that the spring fully seats on the inside of that power button. And again, as you're pushing it in, just do kind of a, a, a tightening motion till you fully get it seated. And then with your thumb, you're going to finalize the position on the power button as you see here. So guys, that's going to complete the full video here on dissecting in my scenarios, just changing the pucks. But this was a great opportunity for you guys and myself to really get to look at the internals of the light. You know, it's very few times we get to see electronics, but it's very nice to see a company not only saying their product's great, but more importantly, getting to see the electronics, the circuitry, and see that they kind of did go the extra mile. So do you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns? Please leave them down in the comment box below. I thank you guys very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.